All right, today we are going to talk about balance, okay? The importance of balance lifestyle. What do we mean by balance? Okay. Actually, balance lifestyle is where you focus on both um, your financial, your, um, your well-being, and also your spiritual. That's what we call balance, uh, and also your mental state. However, there's this product, what we call balance, such as in GM Academia, or it can contribute to this lifestyle. So what can it help you? In what ways? I can say it can help you mentally and physically. Why mentally? Okay, first we let's look at the physical aspects. Okay. So first, um, let's talk about the benefits of omega-3 and 6. Both omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are important, com important component of cell membranes and are precursor to many other substances in the body, such as those involved in regulating blood pressure and inflammatory responses. Okay, now what are we talking about right now? Okay, so first, omega-3 and omega-6, those are both good fats, okay? Why do we need good fats? Why do we need fats in our body? Because fats is the number one, the first thing that you see when you are looking at cell, okay? Human cell. The one that builds up the membrane cell is, of course, the phosphate and the lipids and also some proteins. So lipids is actually fat, all right? So a good diet for cardiovascular diseases. Later on, we will uh, jump deeper into this. Good diet for diabetes, high blood pressure, and other chronic di diseases. Actually, for diabetes, I would suggest omega-7, and we are going to talk about that just a bit later. Good diet for cancer and inflammation. All right. So this one. Benefits of omega-7, palmitolic acid. Now it can support heart health. Okay. How does it support heart health? Okay. Atherosclerosis is a process with it in which cholesterol builds up to form a plate that blocks your blood vessel. If cholesterol builds up and it uh, makes your blood vessels blocks, you know, what will happen to your heart? You can get heart attack. You can also have stroke. Let's say if it blocks your the vessels to your brain. All right. So according to studies, palmitolic acid may decrease the subject's chances of developing high blood pressure and atherosclerosis by reducing blood vessel swelling. Okay, first we have to know, of course, you need cholesterol in order for the blockage to build up. All right. But there is also one more thing that contributes to the blockage. And that is when your blood vessels become irritated or inflamed or also swelling, it will attract, it will absorb all this cholesterol. And this is how it starts. Once it is inflamed, all the cholesterol that runs in the, uh, the bloodstream will be... Uh, Right. The first blockage is actually no blockage at all. All the cholesterol will just, you know, molecat situ. Once they molecat, it will absorb more and more cholesterol, and that will that will increase the chance of it getting blocked. Okay. Right. So first let's talk about the first the first, you know, queenie, 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 all right. The first factors of the blockage, and that is the swelling and also inflammation and also um, the irritation, all right? And then also we have to take care of the, you know, how much cholesterol is in our body. All right. Support insulin sensitivity. Insulin resistance happens when your body cells do not respond to, respond to insulin, a hormone that controls the levels of blood sugar by facilitating glucose utilization. Okay. In order for your body to get calories, it will need to burn glucose, protein, and fats. Right now, we are talking about glucose ataupun nama lain dia gula lah or sugar. All right. So, in order for it to from glucose to calories, 
the process in between that, the process that facilitates, uh, that helps the formation of calories through glucose is what we call metabolism. Not just from glucose to calories, also from fat to calories, also from protein to calories. That is metabolism. The metabolism process is what gives us energy, right? So palmitoic acid has been found to offer protection against insulin resistance in some research. How? How does it help to protect us against insulin resistance? Okay, according to various studies, omega-7 fatty acids may increase the metabolism of glucose, all right? So if there's too much sugar, you will need so many insulin in order for it to become Metab uh, to metabolize, to become calories, all right? However, if there's too much sugar and too much insulin, our body cells might be immune to it some way, all right? What happened is, let's say if there's too much sugar and your body does not respond to it, they will, our body itself will increase the amount of insulin. So the insulin level will spike, all right? But if let's say we have palmitoic acid, omega-7, that can help the metabolism of glucose, our body won't ask for too much insulin to help the metabolism, to metabolize from sugar to calories. So that's how it works. Improve satiety, all right. Taking palmitoic acid uh, either in supplement form or in food form may help you feel full longer. How does it help, all right. According to the study, palmitoic acid reduced food consumptions and encouraged the release of satiety hormones in rats. All right, so they test in rats first, and also when we take omega three, omega seven, we also feel full. All right, because fatty acids may decrease total blood lipids in the fat cell size and increase fat burning. When you burn fat, you don't need so many food to function because if you burn fat. Your, your body fat, you will have lots of calories without you burning those foods that you eat. So your body will ask for less and less foods, all right? Mm. Also, encourage the release of satiety hormones in rats. You know, when you have the satiety hormones, you won't feel so hungry all the time because sometimes you can be hungry from stress, you know? Uh, if you recall, stress eating, you know, chronic stress can cause stress eating. And that habit can cause you to gain fat, to gain, to have so many diseases, right? According to another study, palmitoic acid balance insulin resistance in people prone to developing type 2 diabetes, all right? This is what we talked about earlier. It can support insulin sensitivity, support skin health. I'm sure everybody loves this, especially the women, right? So palmitoic acid may support the health of skin, nails, and hair. When, skill cell, when skin cells get exposed to the sun, pollution, or chemicals, they get oxidized, which may cause your skin to age prematurely. All right, oxidation, we talk a lot of oxidation in, you know, uh, hydrogen bottle topics. How oxidation can cause us to age, you know? And how can it cause our skin to look older from time to time and how can we reverse this condition? Omega-7 is one of the things that can help you to encourage the development of new skin cells and uh, protect you against oxidative damage, all right? Because what is the um, nature of omega-7? It's not like free radical, you know? It's against oxidative. It is um, one of the antioxidants that can help you to protect you against aging, aging in skin, nails, hair, and even in your body in terms of hormones and stuff, right? So it can help you in that way. In addition, some research has shown that palmitoic acid may increase the synthesis of elastin and collagen. I'm sure many people is familiar with elastin and collagen because it is so famous in so many brands, in so many skincare brands. Proteins that keep your skin young, strong, and reduce the appearance and onset of wrinkles. It can increase your elasticity, your skin elasticity, right? Okay, this is what we talked about earlier. Reduce inflammation and swelling, all right? Omega-7 fatty acids may decrease inflammation in people suffering from ulcerative colitis, all right? 
a kind of inflammatory bowel disease. It's like an ulcer, but not in your mouth, but it's in your stomach. Okay, and not just that is this can actually reduce the. All right, so research also find that they may help to decrease inflammation and discomfort in dry eyes. All right, it, it won't just help you in ulcerative colitis. Okay, it won't just in decrease the inflammation there. It can also decrease the inflammation in our blood vessels. Therefore, it can help you. It can protect you against heart disease, heart attack, and also strokes, all right? Because usually those blockage can also and just be formed just because of this inflammation. If there's too much inflammation, there will be so many things young are kind of stuck there. You know, especially cholesterol. If cholesterol is stuck, if you know your blood vessels is very elastic, no inflammation, the cholesterol cannot be stuck. It will just run smoothly within the blood vessels. But if there's an inflammation, the cholesterol will be stuck there just to protect the blood vessels from further damage. That is exactly why. Actually, that blockage is just an overreaction of our own body, trying to protect ourselves. Obesity or too much alcohol consumption can cause swelling in the internal organs, leading to fatty liver diseases and also other visceral fat diseases. All right? Researchers Research shows that palmitolic acid may be effective in individuals with fatty liver diseases by suppressing inflammatory cytokines and improving insulin sensitivity. All right, cytokines play a key role in fatty liver diseases and lead to inflammation and insulin resistance. So cytokines is not a good thing. This is one of the things that can cause inflammation and that can cause fatty liver diseases, all right? Hi, Kuni. <clears throat> Hello, Kuni, boleh dengar tak? Alright, never mind. Cytokines play a key role in fatty liver diseases. Alright, that's this is what we talked about earlier. Cytokines is not a good thing. It is highly inflammatory, inflammatory. And cytokines usually is caused by stress. So the more stressed out you are, the more cytokines you will have, right? So what helps to, do, to suppress this thing is omega-7. All right, support normal cholesterol level. Omega-7 fats also help increase good HDL, high-density lipoprotein, and decrease bad, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels by balancing levels of C-reactive protein an inflammatory marker of heart disease. All right, C-reactive protein. Um, we cannot go too deep into this because it's it's quite complicated. But C-reactive protein, if it's too much, if it's too much, it's not good in your body. But if it's too low, it's also cannot cannot be that good. So we need C-reactive protein at the right, you know, um, at the best level. And what can help you? achieve that best level is omega-7 fats, which can increase good HDL. So if you have much HDL, you have more HDL, more than LDL, then your bloodstream will be much better. Okay, your blood components is much better with high HDL. That's good, pro uh, sorry, good cholesterol. High LDL cholesterol level to lead to a build up of fats in your arteries, i.e. atherosclerosis and also stroke, you know. This condition can begin to block the arteries and therefore increase your risk of suffering a stroke and heart attack. Conversely, a high HDL cholesterol level more may protect against this condition because HDL is what can clean your blood vessels. If you have lots of HDL, it can clean your blood vessels, it can get rid of this blockage. Just like, um, usually we do this experiment in Sacha Inchi with Sacha Inchi oil. All right. However, if we have 
omega 7 that would be much better omega 3 6 9 is good already but if we have extra omega 7 it will be much better in order for us to get rid of this blockage in our bodies in our blood vessels so number seven reduce metabolic syndrome and diabetes risk okay this is what we talked about earlier metabolic syndrome Metabolic syndrome is where our body cannot metabolize food to become calories, to become energy efficiently. Right? So metabolic syndrome describes a group of conditions that can increase the risk of diabetes, stroke, and heart disease. This is what we talk about earlier, including high blood pressure, high blood sugar, low levels of HDL, cholesterol, high triglycerides, and excess belly fat, of course. People with low metabolism, will, most of them will have any of these problems. Some of them have all of these problems. According to American Heart Association, approximately 30%, 30 of the people in the US suffer from metabolic syndrome. Why? First, of course, because we don't exercise regularly. If we exercise regularly and we, if we have the right diet, usually our metabolism will not go down so easily. Because naturally, if we don't exercise, our muscle mass will go down. And our muscle mass is what affects our metabolism. If we have more muscle, our metabolism will be higher. If we have less muscle, our metabolism will be much lower. All right? So through age, with age, even guys, after the age of 30, usually their heart, sorry, their muscle mass will go down along with their metabolism. So they will have metabolic syndrome. Once you have metabolic syndrome, you are at risk of diabetes and all other diseases. All right, so according to this study, consuming a diet rich in monounsaturated fat, which is omega-3, 6, uh, 3, 6, 7, 9, these are the prime example of monounsaturated fat, can decrease metabolic risk factors in individuals suffering from type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes is usually come from food. All right, type one is normally because of your ninety percent because of your genetics. All right, a study on diabetic rats found that exercise and a diet high in monounsaturated fatty acids were more effective at reducing HbA one C. All right, HbA one C is not a good thing. All right, so the more we have HbA one C, the more, more prone we are to having metabolic syndrome, right? Than exercising or consuming the fats alone. So it's better for us to exercise and also consume these fats, these good fats, all right? Than exercising alone or consuming the fats alone. So that's why we, I always preach this. I always tell my clients, my personal training clients, right? Because I'm also a personal trainer. Um, to both take these good fats, and also exercise. This is what we call balance. And this is one of the importance of balance. This fatty acid help improve glycemic control in individuals suffering from suffering from type 2 diabetes. Glycemic index is glycemic index is a unit of how we calculate how much sugar we have in our blood. Right? So if we have high glycemic uh, index. Uh, or certain food have high glycemic index or GI, that's not really good for our blood. And that can increase the risk of us having type 2 diabetes. All right, so just now I talked about the balance. How can it help, right? So let's say if we have physical, um, physical, this can help us physically. So we have physical health. How can we help? mental health because of this all right when you have physical health you can you can be active you know you can do things that some people without physical health cannot right so this thing can help you function normally as a person and we all know now that mental health is not just about this uh, just about mental it's also closely related to our physical health because if our hormones are not pristine or are not at their best condition, it can affect our mood, right? It can, make our, it can affect our mental health. Just like sometimes when we don't eat, we can become hangry, right? Hungry and angry at the same time. 
that's that's because of hormones actually and sometimes when we haven't eat for so long or our eating routine is not that good it can make us have the gastric or maybe good right so this kind of thing can also affect your mood and can lead you to anxiety so that's what that's why we cannot separate mental health physical health and other health all these things come, come together comes together right so number eight reduce heart disease risk all right according to centers of disease control and prevention one in every four people die from heart disease in united states so in us 25 percent of people there die from heart disease that's how dangerous it is which research has shown that the nutrients and fats found in macadamia nuts may reduce the fact the risk factors for heart disease why because macadamia nut rich in omega-7 all right number eight reduce heart disease risk in a 2000 in a 2007 study men with high cholesterol showed reduced risk factor for coronary artery disease after eating macadamia nuts for just four weeks just four weeks one month roughly one month they have reduced risk factors for coronary artery disease all right a review paper published in 2015 found that consuming three nuts of any kind reduced triglycerides, low density lipoprotein, and total cholesterol, LDL, bad cholesterol. So triglycerides is a form of fat, actually, and it's not really good. All right, three nuts include cashews, macadamia nuts, walnuts, almonds, and other nutrient-dense nuts. So nuts is actually quite good, though. Of course, uh, some, some of us have uh, allergic to peanuts, right? But those who are allergic to peanuts, sometimes they can eat macadamia nuts, they can eat almonds. So you can you can try this balance, you know? Some of my friends cannot eat peanuts. However, they can, when they consume such an oil and balance, they don't have any problem at all, right? They're not an allergy to these nuts. Some studies suggest that substituting polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fats or saturated fats increases good cholesterol or high density lipoprotein. Okay, so this statement suggests if we take more unsaturated fats, whether it's poly or mono, it will increase it will increase your HDL. But if let's say you keep on taking saturated fats all the time, right? Your LDL will be higher than your HDL, and that is not healthy. That will increase the chance of those metabolic syndrome and any diseases that comes with it. Some studies suggest that, okay, as we mentioned, macadamia nuts are a great substitute because they are rich in mono and saturated fat, but most other nuts will do the trick if the max are nearby. All right, so macadamia nuts, is high with omega-7. What, what does it mean? But most other nuts will do the trick if max are nearby. Max is macadamia nuts, all right? Max are macadamia nuts, not macbooks. Huh? All right. So the best thing is macadamia nuts. That's number one thing, okay? In terms of omega-7, uh, the volume of omega-7 in it, the percentage of omega-7, I would suggest macadamia nuts, all right? And, but omega-3 and 6, I would suggest such and chi. But why, why choose when you can have both in just one packet, right? So that's why I think balance is the best, uh, best thing you can have. Huh? A study conducted by Swedish researchers found that consuming nuts may help the risk of heart failure and atrial fibrillation. Heart failure, heart attack, atrial fibrillation, these are heart diseases, closely related to fats and cholesterol all right this is quite um, this is quite uh, technical so i just uh, summarize omega-9 is um, oleic acid and it is not essential they can be produced by the body because essential uh, nutrients is what cannot be uh, produced in the body but omega-6 Omega-9, we cannot produce, but it's best. We can produce omega-9, sorry, 
but it's better if we take uh, from outside outside source as well. One large study found that high monounsaturated fat diets could reduce plasma triglyceride by 19% and bad very low lead density lipoprotein cholesterol by 22% in patients with diabetes. 22% is very much, you know. Uh, maybe you think just 22%. Imagine if you have to pay tax 22%, it will be it is a massive amount, right? So that's that's how much it is actually affects it will affect our body okay just imagine like um this is the borderline this is the borderline if you go through this borderline you will be unhealthy and imagine you are at this level and it can increase 22 percent so this much it can save your life just by this 20 percent, it can save your life another study found that feeding mice diets high in mono unsaturated fat improve insulin sensitivity and decrease inflammation. This is what we talked about earlier. Uh, the same with omega-7 and also omega-9. The same study found that humans who ate high monounsaturated fat diets had less inflammation and better insulin sensitivity. Okay. Same with omega-7 as well. All right, so these are the serving suggestions. Two to five years old, one ml, one milliliter daily. 6 to 11 years old, 1.5 ml daily, 12 to 18 years old, 2 milliliter daily, and 18 years and above, 3 milliliter, 3 milliliter daily. Hmm. Sorry. So these are just the uh, minimum. You can take more because this is not a supplement. It is actually a superfood. So you can take much more. This is just the, what we call First, if you want to start, if you cannot eat much, right? You can start with one milliliter or one sachet for 18 years old and above. But we know people, even one of our one of our founders, take 10 packets every day, 10 sachet every day. And he looks much younger than his age, than people his age. So I would suggest you take more. But this is the minimum so that you can start. Just to start. Just to start taking care of your body. Edible way, how can we eat it? Okay, like me, I can just consume it directly. And then number two, mix with salads. If you cannot consume it directly and you love salads, you can mix with salad. Mix, mix with drinks, mix with yogurt, and also mix with food. However, when you mix with drinks, don't mix it with uh, boiling water. Okay? At least, at, at most, at most 90 degrees and lower. When you mix it with boiling water, these unsaturated fats can be saturated fats. That's what we don't want. We are trying to get rid of saturated fats in our body by consuming unsaturated fats. Mixed with food. All right. Again, don't mix it while you are cooking the food. But when you are serving the food, when it cools down a little bit, you can just mix it with the food. All right. So this is the kandungan. This is what is inside incha oil and balance and also rich. So today we're talking about balance. Omega-3 and 6 in this is medium. However, the omega-7 and 9 in balance is high, or we call rich, rich in omega-7 and 9. However, it, can, it also contains omega-3 and 6, all right? So which one should I take? I suggest you take this in the morning, you take this in the evening, and you take this at night, all right? So each one sachet every day. That will be best for us. Isn't that too much? No, it's not a supplement. You can say it's too much for supplement and other foods. Maybe pisang goreng, right? You eat satu plastic pisang goreng every day. That can be too much. But this one, just 9 milliliters. 3 milliliters, 3 milliliters, and 3 milliliters. So it's not too much. That will be just, just nice. You can take more if you want to. But that is my suggestion. 
So these are the references that you can see uh, about the studies, about how good these things are with credible sources, all right? Because it is getting so popular, you know, this, all this omega-3, 6, 9, 7, these are getting so popular because of their reputation. They have good reputations because of these studies, because of how much they affect our lives, all right? All right, so that's about balance. Uh, Queenie, boleh dengar tak? 